um, given that today we're talking about legacy, um, I thought I would use a story of my own de devising for a legacy. Legacy is an important word. It can mean the things that we leave behind. It can mean future generations who attend the same school or the same education. But I think the most important meaning, according to Merriam-Webster, is something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor or from the past. On a personal note, my grandfather was an amazing man in many ways. Although he was entirely self-educated, he spoke seven languages and read voraciously. He was one of the founding members of the Sherlock Holmes Society in Toronto, the bootmakers. And once while serving on a sequestered jury, sent home an encrypted message that no one could figure out until he came home to unscramble the illicit message. Among his belongings was a full set of the Strand magazines where Conan Doyle first published. But his real legacy was his insatiable curiosity. All of his descendants have that same desire to know and learn and figure things out. When we remember someone, we often focus on what they did rather than the big picture of what it meant. Mark DeWolf was in his own words, a hurricane. And that meant among other things that he stirred things up. Like other forces of nature, he did not appear out of thin air and his was not the only one in a sea of calm, but it was an important one for significant reasons. Today, I'm going to tell a few stories of legacies, one of many hurricanes and of the way we stirred things up and in some important ways made it possible for us to live according to Unitarian Universalist principles. The fight for LGBTQ rights in Canada goes back to 1648, when a military drummer was sentenced to death for the crime of homosexuality. His sentence was commuted when he agreed to become the first permanent executioner in what was then known as New France. Choosing to continue to live when the odds are against us has been an ongoing struggle for LGBTQ plus folk when we find ourselves in the middle of a hurricane. On February 11th, 1974, Richard North and Chris Vogel were married by a Unitarian minister in, Mo in Winnipeg in the first known same-sex marriage in Canada. Their case led to the legalization of same-sex marriage in Manitoba in 2004. Their original 1974 marriage certificate is on display at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Sadly, however, they are still fighting to have the province formally register their marriage as happening in 1974 rather than 30 years later. Sometimes hurricanes take a very long time to die out. On February 5th, 1981, four gay bathhouses were raided by the Toronto Police Service. The event is now considered one of the most crucial turning points in Canadian LGBTQ plus history as an unprecedented community mobilization now regarded as Canadian equivalent to the Stonewall riots took place to protest the police conduct. One of the protest marches during this mobilization is generally recognized as the first Toronto Pride event ever. Frequently, hurricanes cause landslides of other activities, which become even more significant than the precipitating events. Later that year, the Centers for Disease Control started to receive reports of high rates of unusual diseases in young gay men. The disease was named Acquire Immune Deficiency Syndrome, and the first case is reported in Canada in March of 1982. That same year, Mark DeWolf began his ministry in Mississauga and was diagnosed with AIDS. One of the truly incredible stories that I read is about an occasion when he was visiting another congregation and shared his story, including his health challenges. And the folks he was speaking with were so touched that afterwards they lined up to shake his hand and hug him. This may not seem so earth shattering now, but remember that at that time we knew very little about the transmission of AIDS and it was a full six years 
before the pr picture of Princess Diana touching a person living with age created a media frenzy. Sometimes hurricanes inspire generosity and kindness. The history books are full of similar stories of people who are asked to choose between living their lives authentically or staying safely closeted. We have over 350 years of LGBT history in Canada, and each step, no matter how small or large, has led us to the place where we have laws that protect our rights, we have the ability to marry, to raise our children, or adopt if we choose. And we can never forget that those who forged the path and led the way, especially those who did soar with the force of hurricanes. Mark DeWolf had the advantage of a loving and understanding family and faith community, but that doesn't mean it would have been easy for him to become one of the first openly gay ministers. It also doesn't diminish the importance of his work towards creating a fair and equitable society. Just three years after his death, the first Mark DeWolf Social Action Award was presented, ensuring that his legacy would include the call for others to follow in his footsteps. Over the last three decades, there have been some remarkable people who have been the recipient of the award. In fact, the list re reads like the who's who of the UCM congregation. Each of those people has in turn left their own legacy and has given us a vibrant and living image of what it means to be Unitary Universalist and how one voice can really change the world.